OK, well I've read the book and it says to install the software first and then connect the duet. So I've just inserted the, um, the installation CD and um, you've got the duet installer there. But there's also a getting started manual included in software form. And a user guide there. And uninstall um, option and a maestro user's guide. I'm not sure what that's about. And there's a readme there as well. So. Um, I'll just read all that and then come back and uh, get the thing installed. And we can try it out through the KRK, see what it sounds like. OK, we're into the install now. And uh, let's continue. Let use your licence agreement. Continue. Yes, I agree. There we go. Right, I have to do a product registration now, so... I'll do that first and then come back. And this um, installation actually forces you, I'm pretty sure it forces you to uh, to do the product registration before it installs the software, okay? So back in a minute. Okay, we're past the registration. I had to go through the usual malarkey of uh, trying to select a state when I'm not in the United States of America. But I figured that out eventually. And uh, here we go, install. And put my password in here. There we go. Yes, continue installation, and now we're off. Installing the uh, Maestro thing that was referred to here in this uh, this Maestro user guide. That's actually the software applet. There's a whole software applet that comes with it. Uh, which you know uh, activates when you press that central button uh, rotary wheel that I showed you on the unit. So there's my install succeeded, and um, restart. Just actually, let me just read that book. Just a second, I'll have a quick look at that book. Do -do 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 do uh, restart first. Okay, here we go. Bing, restart. I'll see you in a minute. The software's installed and the Mac has rebooted and now just connect up the, uh, the Firewire cable. I would say that um, if your Mac Pro is under your workbench, you're going to need a longer Firewire cable than this. So you'd have to buy a third party one, I expect. But anyway, um, here we go. Let's plug it in. See what happens. Bidding, oh, the lights come on. I can hear the Mac making a little clicking noise. Let's take this off. Oh, oh, okay. Let's just bring the camera in. Okay, there's the um, Maestro control software that pops up when you plug in the Duet. By default, it pops up. Once the, the uh, Maestro software has, has appeared, you can go into the preferences and set it to not pop up. Uh, if you do that and you need to open it, it's accessible via your applications, like in any like a, any other program. Okay, so you've got two panels. You've got the control panel and the mixer panel. So we're going to look at the basic parts of the control panel in terms of the inputs and outputs. In other words, the default page that it opens with, which is the level tab selected at the top there on the left, right? Okay, uh, here you have got your two inputs and your output. Um, they, they have icons, the inputs, next to, um, on the left hand side here, that directly are copies of the icons embossed on the barrels of the connectors on the uh, breakout cable um, to assist, you know, visually. Let's look at one input. You've got a meter with a red over indicator. You've got a level control and that directly connects to the front panel rotary encoder on the Duet hardware unit. You can choose whether you are taking the input from the uh, XLR as a mic input, um, in which case you have phase reverse and phantom power at 48 volt available, or you can choose from one of two XLR, XLR line inputs, plus 4 dBU and minus 10 dBV, to suit both professional and semi-pro gear. Okay. And lastly, you've got 
instrument level, in which case this input is taking its input from the unbalanced quarter inch input socket on the cluster cable. And the icon changes to show the guitar as it is on the actual socket on the cable. OK, now you still have phase reverse, by the way, if you choose instrument quarter inch input. OK, let's put it back to XLR mic. OK, you, uh, the two inputs can be grouped and they follow each other around if you adjust either. Also, if you offset the level of one to the other, so they're different, and then gang or group them, you can adjust their, their levels up and down as a ganged or grouped pair, but they retain their relative offset values to each other. Okay, So that's the two inputs and how you select what you're listening to, where the source is coming in. Right. There is one other um, permutation to do with these, and that is if you click the Advanced tab at the top here, and just here, there is a setting saying mic instrument gain mode there, right? Now, the mic instrument gain mode is basically works like this. Um, to get the full amount of gain available, the Duet uses a relay switch. So with it set to max gain range, the Duet's using this relay switch. If you have XLR mic selected, you've got a range of from 10 to 75. And the relay clicks in when you go from 20 to 21. You can hear it clicking there, right? If you switch to clickless operation, where you get a reduced gain range, but there's no relays employed, all right? Um, the gain range is then reduced by 10 dB overall, and the level is then adjusted appropriately, depending whether or not you've got phantom power activated. Okay. And so look, clickless operation. We'll go back to the level page, and now it goes from 20. 75 instead of 10 to 75 okay but if I switch on phantom power it goes from 10 to 65 okay and if you were to choose instrument input you put this back on max gain range using the relay and you get from 0 all the way to 65 and the relay cuts in when you pass 10 okay if you switch it to the clickless, you get a reduced range, and that goes from 0 to 55. Okay, okay. so that's one other little um, adjustment to do with that input select section. Finally, the output has a volume adjuster, which again connects to the front panel a rotary of the duet. You've got a level meter with a red over indicator. You've got a mute. And you can choose two different output configurations for your quarter inch unbalanced outs. Line out mode, which is the default where you get to adjust the volume. And in that mode, basically you've got uh, 0, to 64, 0 to minus 64 dB of attenuation at a nominal output level of minus 10 dBV. If you instead choose instrument amp, you lose the ability to adjust the output volume. You can still mute though. And then it is set to a nominal level of minus 20 dBV, suitable for connection to an instrument amplifier. Okay, So that is basically how you assign your inputs and the permutations that can go with those. Lastly, I think I can just fit this in. If you look up at the top of this page, um, there's this thing where you can drop down the duet. Uh, drop down this list and there's one duet in it because I've only got one plugged in but the fact that you've got this drop down list and this identify unit button which if you click it it stays latched and then what happens is the duet lights all come on all of them to sort of identify that unit that would suggest Apogee has a plan whether or not implemented yet to use more than one duet okay so that's a basic introduction to what the uh, default level page does, how you assign your inputs and the various things that can be done there and the output. And we'll leave the mixer for another episode. What we're going to look at now is how the front panel rotary controller of the Duet operates with this software and the other uh, facilities that the front panel rotary encoder allows you to, to access. Okay, So back for the next one soon.